Hello, everyone. I am Lindsay Joseph, the Senior Program Officer for Lynx at Resolve to Save Lives, and I'd like to welcome you to the Lynx webinar. For those who may be joining our webinar series for the first time, Lynx was developed in collaboration between the World Health Organization, CDC Foundation, and Resolve to Save Lives to serve as an online community and resource sharing platform for people working to improve cardiovascular health around the world. Before we begin, I'd like to review a few housekeeping rules. We will have three presentations followed by a Q&A session with the audience at the end. Participants will be muted for the duration of the webinar, but will have the option to type in questions during the Q&A portion of the presentation. We encourage all participants to use the Q&A button and not the chat feature to ask questions. The Q&A button is located at the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to linkscommunity.org following the session. I'll now hand it over to Dr. Andrew Moran, Director of Global Hypertension Control at Resolve to Save Lives, to introduce today's topic and speakers. Over to you, Andrew. Hey, thank you, Lindsay. Um, thanks everyone for joining today. So um, today's session is going to be about quality improvement for hypertension management and control. And as we know, um, hypertension globally kills approximately 10 million people each year and more, more than all infectious disease deaths combined. Resolve to Save Lives works with global, national, and local partners to help establish and, and uh, scale up proven strategies to improve hypertension control. Uh, quality improvement strategies like provider education and patient reminders have been shown to improve hypertension control. So today we want to discuss work currently being done in India and Bangladesh in programs that are supported by Resolve in, but in partnership with the uh, local ministries of health uh, and World Health Organization and uh, the India Council on Medical Research. So um, just to describe, hang on one moment. I think we're just quieting a dog. Um, I'm oh, back, sorry about that. Yeah, so I just wanted to give an introductions about the, the two programs that we're gonna be uh, presenting some quality improvement details from. Uh, the first is the India Hypertension Control Initiative. It's a multi-partner initiative between the Ministry of Health, Government of India, the India Council on Medical Research, and the World Health Organization, India and state governments. So Resolve to Save Lives um, is the international technical partner for the IHCI and implementation of the IHCI started in 2018 in 26 districts across five states in India, but now it's being rapidly scaled up in 100 districts across India in every state. Under IHCI, several strategies are being implemented for reducing patient default rates, focusing on prevention, early identification, and retrieval. So you'll hear more details about that shortly. And then secondly, in terms of the Bangladesh program. So in conjunction with the Bangladesh Hypertension Program, the National Heart Foundation of Bangladesh has been conducting rigorous evaluations of continuous improvement or of, of, for the, to improve the quality of implementation and the quality improvement work in Bangladesh includes focus on reducing patient loss to follow-up and improving adherence to the hypertension treatment protocol among providers. So related interventions have included instituting a standardized process for calling overdue patients, implementing patient counseling by facility staff, calculating and monitoring treatment inertia among providers and establishing a token system to reduce um, patient wait time. So um, I'm gonna move on to introducing our, uh, our presenters today. We'll be hearing from Dr. Rina Gupta, Dr. Kiran Durgan, and Dr. Sohel Chowdhury. So Dr. Rina Gupta will give our presen first presentation. Dr. Gupta is the Chief Medical Officer for Performance Improvement within the Technical um, uh, and hypertension teams at 
resolve to save lives and an associate professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Gupta has over 15 years of experience working with health systems on quality improvement for chronic diseases um, in the primary care context. And so um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn the um, presentation over to Dr. Gupta so she can give her, um, her presentation titled Quality Improvement Approaches to Improve Hypertension Control. Over to you, Rina. Thanks so much, Andrew. It's really a pleasure to be here today for this webinar on quality. And I will just take a moment to share my slides. Are the slides now visible? Great. Yes. Um, thank you. So quality is a central component to any healthcare delivery program. And today we look forward to discussing aspects of quality improvement for hypertension programs, including strategies and country experience with quality improvement initiatives for hypertension control improvement. In this analysis that was done by the Lancet Commission on high quality health systems, they found that 60% of excess deaths in low and middle income countries for conditions that are amenable to healthcare occur among people who sought care but received poor quality care, as opposed to 40% who did not access the health system. This percentage, as you can see, is even greater for cardiovascular diseases, which make up the largest portion of deaths amenable to health care, illustrating that poor quality care is now a bigger contributor to preventable mortality than insufficient access. And addressing quality is really a core consideration of universal health coverage, along with expansion of coverage and financial protection. The Lancet Commission found that high quality health systems could save 8 million lives each year in low and middle income countries. Solutions to creating high quality health systems involve both macro level strategies at the national health system level, including policy and financing changes to promote quality, as well as meso and micro level changes at subnational levels. And today what we'll really focus on are those meso and micro strategies at district and facility levels to engage and promote a culture of continuous quality improvement among programs um, and frontline staff at facilities. What is quality improvement? The US CDC defines QI as activities that promote population health, affordability, and improve patient experience. This is also known as the triple aim from the Institute for Healthcare Improvement illustrated here that many have modified to the quadruple aim, including healthcare worker experience as well. And the WHO has called for quality to be a core universal healthcare coverage consideration with attention to measurement of quality. When looking specifically at hypertension, there are quality gaps that are apparent across every level of the hypertension cascade. So from uh, lack of diagnosis for patients who are unaware to loss of follow-up and treatment barriers for those uh, who are aware to poor service delivery and treatment inertia for patients who are treated but uncontrolled. And quality improvement strategies for hypertension can really be applied broadly across any areas of service delivery. Quality improvement to improve retention and care, reduce loss of follow-up, quality improvement to improve blood pressure measurement, screening and diagnosis, to ensure provider adherence to treatment protocols and reduce therapeutic inertia, increase adherence to medications, um, improve drug supply as well. Quality improvement is really central in the pathway from implementation of a hypertension program package to improvement of outcomes. Implementing a hypertension package itself improves outcomes, but what is often seen is following implementation of a program, up, uh, outcomes can plateau, as is illustrated here in this image of the simple dashboard from the simple app, uh, where though it is small to see here, um, many of the outcomes have, uh, are flat. And what's really key and central is a systematic review of data to identify gaps in performance and implement rapid cycle QI interventions with feedback loops to identify what is effective and drive towards improvement in outcomes. To drill deeper into the feedback loops, the process is really about the four quadrants in this life cycle. 
The first is about developing good reports that measure what matters. And two, the consistent and deliberate use of that data across the health system to identify performance gaps and where intervention is needed. And then third, to systematically implement those interventions in a standardized way uh, to address those performance gaps. And four is monitoring for impact to assess, looking at the data, are the interventions that are implemented actually having the desired impact to improve performance? And then repeating the feedback loop to iterate again from there. I'd like to now speak for a few minutes about experience with one aspect of applying a quality improvement approach for hypertension, specific to improving retention and care and reducing loss to follow up, which is just one of many different areas of quality improvement in hypertension. But why focus on loss to follow up? Loss to follow up is a primary driver of limited hypertension control. And in this analysis by our colleagues and upcoming presenters from the India Hypertension Control Program, they found in this published uh, analysis that over half of patients return to care during follow-up uh, period. And for those who return to care, blood pressure control increased significantly from baseline at the type of time of registration to follow-up in this pre-post analysis. However, nearly 50% of patients did not return to care and were lost to follow up during the follow up period. This experience, as we'll hear, and uh, numbers are similar in Bangladesh and not unique. Really, there is a broad literature um, on NCDs that have demonstrated similar rates of loss to follow up upwards of 50% in non communicable disease programs. In response, both the India Hypertension Control Initiative that we will hear about from our upcoming presenters and the National Heart Foundation of Bangladesh Hypertension Program launched quality improvement initiatives focused on improving follow-up rates as well as strategies, other strategies to improve hypertension control. And I'll share a few um, of the methods using quality, a quality improvement framework that we look forward to the upcoming presenters um, to hear more about the quality improvement interventions implemented and outcomes. The approach utilized draws from lean quality improvement methodology, which many of you may be familiar with was developed first by Toyota Manufacturing for the purpose of creating cars back in the 1930s with the goal of perfecting the process and having zero defects when producing a new car. And this approach has been widely adapted to healthcare since the 1980s with the key really focused on encouraging all members of a healthcare system, not just program leaders, but government officials down to frontline staff at individual facilities to continuously ask the question, how are we doing and can we do it better? using these six steps for problem solving. So often as leaders, we jump to solutions, assuming we know what needs to be done to improve a problem. And the focus here is really on stepping back and focusing on humble inquiry, learning about what's happening directly in the field to deeply understand the root causes of a problem and design interventions based on those root causes. There's many tools uh, for identifying root causes, but one classic one is a fishbone or Ishikawa diagram, which is a qualitative visual tool for identifying and digging deeper into the reasons why a problem is happening. And this is an example um, from the Bangladesh National Heart Foundation team from a qualitative focus group that was done to identify top reasons for uncontrolled hypertension uh, in the hypertension control program in Bangladesh. Um, as, and as you can see, it's one of the top reasons identified with loss to follow up, drilling down deeper into top causes for loss to follow up including long travel distance to reach facilities, long waiting times at the facilities, lack of standardized follow-up processes to retrieve patients uh, back to care. And with these qualitative, using a qualitative tool to understand qualitative reasons paired with quantitative data, the goal is to then generate interventions that address those root causes. Uh, and one additional, this tool, the PICK chart, which is based on having a broad set of possible interventions to test 
involves using this chart to prioritize then and identify which interventions are likely to have the greatest impact and be the most feasible to implement. And this I'll share is just an example of a pick chart from the NHS team. Um, we'll be hearing much more uh, detail about the program and interventions from Professor Sohel uh, and Dr. Shamim, uh, where several interventions were identified specific to loss to follow up that were uh, deemed to be both impactful uh, as well as feasible to implement, uh, addressing things from improving a standardized system for outreach to patients who had not returned to care, uh, to building towards a system of decentralized care of community clinic refills closer to patients' homes. And with the selected interventions, the Plan, Do, Study, Act, or PDSA improvement concept is a standard uh, systematic tool for guiding the testing of interventions, with the core principle being to use small tests of change to test an intervention, learn from the results, modify, and continue to uh, iterate to drive towards improvement. So we'll now look forward to hearing more about the programs in both India and Bangladesh. Um, and specifically interventions around quality improvement for loss of follow-up, as well as hypertension control more broadly. Um, but I want to close before turning it over with three points about incorporating quality improvement frameworks for hypertension control programs that really involves a focus on building capacity of programs, local leaders, and frontline staff in quality improvement, embedding and systematizing the structured use of data to drive improvement, and utilizing QI methods for rapid cycle improvements and feedback loops to promote a culture of continuous quality improvement. And with that, I will turn it back over to Andrew. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Rena. That was a terrific presentation, a great introduction. Um, and now I want to introduce uh, Dr. Kiran Durgat. He is a medical officer um, based in India with more than 10 years of public health experience including implementation of immunization and child health programs. Since 2018, he has extensively worked at district and state levels on the implementation of the India Hypertension Control Initiative. Currently, he is providing technical support at the national level as Senior Cardiovascular Health Officer with World Health Organization India for scaling up of the IHCI project across all states of India. And now I'm going to hand it over to um, Dr. Karen for his presentation titled, India Experience on Quality Improvement of Hypertension Management. Over to you. Well, thank you, Dr. Andrew, for the introduction. And uh, thanks to Link's uh, team for giving us the opportunity to present India uh, experience. So I'll just share my slides, I hope is visible for everyone yes yeah. so yeah thank you so i'll be sharing my uh, our india experience uh, how we went about uh, to improve the uh, quality for hypertension management so before that i would like to just um, introduce briefly to the participants about india hypertension control initiative so we call it shortly as ihci uh, so ISCI is, uh, has been launched uh, since November 2017 by Government of India with the support of uh, uh, partners WHO India and uh, Indian Council of Medical Research. So since then we have been uh, um, expanding ISCI across India. So as you can see here, the green states uh, we implemented in the first phase uh, in the beginning of 2018. And we have a more experience of implementation and issues of ISCI in these five uh, states, which are in green color. And later, we blue color in the phase two uh, that were implemented in 2020 recently. Now, because of uh, COVID, uh, the expansion got a little bit delayed. So the light states in light blue color are yet to be implemented that we are planning this year. So overall, as of now, we are in 69 districts from 14 states out of total 36 states of India. 
and uh, we have covered more than 100 million uh, adult population. So adult is more than 18 years of uh, uh, age group population as of now. And we have enrolled more than 1.2 million hypertension patients still uh, last month. So this is on brief on high CI, and I'll just brief on the background, how we went on uh, improving quality of uh, hypertension management. So uh, at the end of 2018, we could uh, enroll uh, almost 0.2 million hypertension patients. And when we see the treatment outcome in the first quarter of 2019, we saw out of 0.2 million hypertension patients, uh, there was a good retention rate, 30 to 75 percent, and it was variable uh, in the district, districts where we implemented. But however, the proportion of patients who were missing the visit in this first quarter out of this 0.2 million was as high as 70 percent. And it was also low in some of the districts. There were good performers, uh, like uh, they had just 25 percent. So we wanted to take uh, uh, timely interventions to decrease these missed visits and last to follow up to improve the retention rate. So WHO supported uh, CVHOs, uh, we call cardiovascular health officers who are medical officers placed in district and states. Uh, they initiated several interventions uh, to improve the retention rates. So these are the interventions we implemented in 2019-20 to improve the retention rate. So I have divided this uh, as three categories to prevent uh, defaults and to identify the defaulters and the retrieval of uh, patients who have missed. So to prevent, basically, we started delivering the services at village level. We decentralized the services of ISCI and we made availability of drugs at uh, sub-centers at uh, village level. Earlier, it was PHC and Debo and at the higher centers. So we also started uh, uh, encouraging counseling at all the centers and uh, the documentation of patient uh, details was an issue so that we took care and we started uh, uh, establishing NCD corners in all the PLCs and above facilities where uh, all the patients, adult patients who are coming to the facility should uh, visit the NCD corners for opportunity screening and also the follow up patients who cannot miss the visit. We also uh, had extended period prescriptions in very limited districts in 2020. And for identification, uh, uh, out of all the uh, 14 states, only four states are having uh, manual, uh, using manual treatment cards, and the rest of the states are using simple application. So the states who are using manual treatment cards, we are using two stack system of card storage so that we can identify the defaulters. And every month we are uh, producing line list of these defaulters and we are handing it over to the, sta uh, the staff of the facilities to uh, uh, trace them. And we are also working on the streamlining of patient flow so that these patients are not missed and they are identified. And in the states who are using manual treatment cards, we have kept follow-up registers in all the facilities to identify these defaulters. And then uh, lastly, to retry who have already defaulted, we have uh, involved all the frontline workers, like we call ASHA, accredited social health activists and ANMs at village level. Uh, to visit the patients that, who have defaulted at their door, doorstep and uh, staff nurse at the facility will call the uh, patients uh, to come back to the system and we also have established some patient support groups in some of the districts and the reviews uh, every month what card cardiovascular health officers are conducting is uh, uh, really helping us and uh, uh, if I have to say experience during the complete lockdown last year in India, in two months we had complete lockdown, the patients were not able to come to the facilities. So at that time, uh, the CVHOs uh, motivated and uh, took the health facilities uh, staff into confidence. And 49% uh, of enrolled patients uh, were delivered the drugs at uh, their doorsteps. Uh, so that was a significant uh, achievement. So uh, having all these interventions in place, uh, I can show you some examples from two states, Punjab and Madhya Pradesh. There was a considerable improvement in uh, the, uh, the retention rate and also quarter, uh, the control rates. So this is uh, the graph showing quarterly control rates from Punjab and Madhya Pradesh. Punjab is using simple application, digital application, and Madhya Pradesh is using manual treatment cards. So as you can see, in the beginning of 2018 quarterly report, it was 24-26% control rate in these two states. 
and recently they have achieved more than 45 percent nearly to 50 percent control rates so at this juncture uh, we were not sure that which uh, strategy which interventions which countermeasure is working uh, are having how much impact so uh, so at that time uh, we had to go for a qi exercise to select the certain interventions and see how uh, these interventions are impacting on the retention rate or the quality of the program. So uh, uh, Resolve to Save Lives team helped us uh, in having workshop with uh, CVHOs along with WHO India and uh, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. So IHCA team came together and we had a workshop with CVHOs in late 2020. And as Dr. Reena mentioned, we used a fish bone diagram. This fish is from India. So we, we had uh, these uh, uh, tools uh, to uh, enlist the causes of low retention in these districts. And then uh, we adopted uh, PDSA methodology uh, for to go ahead with uh, these exercise. And uh, out of all the districts who are implementing as a pilot, we have taken three districts uh, depending on the uh, rate of high missed visit and last to follow up and we began the exercise. So in these three districts we further the next step uh, the cardiovascular health, uh, health officers analyzed the data and uh, they came up with a uh, three to five health facilities within their districts in these three districts uh, based on uh, high missed visit and last to follow up. And then they visited uh, the health facilities the GEMBA uh, although they were visiting every day uh, these health facilities, this was quite different because they had a different vision now and uh, they went with a different vision and they uh, helped the staff nurses and health uh, workers to enlist the defaulters and uh, they did an in-depth analysis of the data available in the health facilities. And with the health workers, they also contacted patients, few were over phone and few they also visited at home and they analyzed all the reasons why patients are not coming to the facilities. And then they drawn uh, the key interventions, the countermeasures to those uh, specific reasons. And they took uh, district officials and state officials into confidence that what are the interventions they are going to do in those districts. And they trained the staff uh, on the countermeasures, how to go about. And finally, they decided the process indicators and what has to be done. So this step, these steps uh, really helped us in uh, implementing this uh, QI exercise. So these are the three districts uh, from three different states, uh, Telangana, Punjab, Maharashtra. We have identified uh, districts and uh, the number of facilities were like three to five, seven uh, facilities uh, depending. This is a, a random, uh, this is a selection through uh, high missed uh, visits and last to follow based on the data. And then, uh, so you can see some of the reasons were the poor retrieval of patients by staff. And uh, in Telangana, the patients who were uh, registered, they started taking a treatment from private sector. So as per the reasons uh, we found uh, by visiting the health facilities and by visiting the patients, talking to the patients, we had uh, countermeasures. Uh, so some of the countermeasures I have enlisted here are like, uh, 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 ensuring staff nurses uh, calling the patients and the frontline workers visiting their home uh, and these was monitored uh, by CVHOs and STS. Okay. So and then decentralization was the one of the countermeasures which uh, we adopted and uh, augmenting real-time simple app entries which was uh, actually hampered due to CV uh, the coronavirus last time pandemic. So these are the countermeasures we adopted and we are now in the process of measuring the impact of these uh, countermeasures. So as of now, I, I don't have results of how these impacts, uh, the, the impact of these countermeasures. So we are in process of uh, implementing these interventions. So maybe uh, in a couple of months, I'll come back and share the results of these impacts. And finally, I would like to uh, uh, share some of the key challenges, uh, which is actually shifting priority to COVID vaccination. As you are aware in India, the, the speed of vaccination is very uh, fast. Now the priority is mainly for COVID vaccination and all the staff have been repurposed for the vaccination. So motivating health staff uh, for these uh, activities 
uh, is very uh, difficult we are finding difficulty and uh, uh, in some of the districts we are uh, the manual preparation of these line lists like in telangana we are using manual treatment cards so it take lot of time every month uh, preparing these line lists and uh, are uh, sharing manually all these things with the facility uh, health facilities and then uh, as i said uh, most of the interventions for the retrieval of missed visits involves frontline workers like ashas and anms they are in huge number because every asha is in uh, uh, every village uh, so we have to mobilize all these frontline workers and we have to train them that consumes lot of resources and time and energy by cardiovascular health officers and sts so finally uh, the way forward is we want to replicate uh, these uh, counter measures whatever i had enlisted uh, to all the health facilities across the districts across india so that is a challenge and also way forward uh, as uh, uh, because uh, one cbho concentrating on few facilities at a time is much easier but when it is uh, replicated to the much higher number of health facilities it would be difficult for him or her uh, to have a same concentration and monitoring level uh, at that particular time so with those uh, uh, words i will i will stop here and uh, uh, i will move on to i i request to dr andrew to take over thank you Thank you, and a great presentation, Dr. Karen. And of, of course, everyone, just a reminder that you can put your questions in the Q&A box or um, if needed in the uh, chat box, and we will um, give uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Rina, Dr. Karen, and Dr. Sohel um, opportunity to respond to your questions. So for our last presentation today, um, I'm uh, introducing Dr. Sohel Chowdhury, he is currently appointed as professor and head of the Department of Epidemiology and Research of the National Heart Foundation of Bangladesh. Uh, Dr. Chaudhry graduated from Dhaka Medical College in 1988, obtained a doctoral degree from Shiga University of Medical Science in Japan in 1996. His research interest lies in cardiovascular disease and its risk factor epidemiology and prevention. He is leading the hypertension control programs of the National Heart Foundation um, of Bangladesh. So um, Dr. Sohel's presentation is titled Quality Improvement Interventions to Improve Hypertension Control at the Primary Healthcare Level in Bangladesh. Over to you, Dr. Sohel. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andrew, for the introduction. I just, I'll just share my screen. Okay, is it visible to all? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Good. So I'll be talking about uh, the quality improvement intervention to improve hypertension control in the primary healthcare uh, system in Bangladesh that we are working in the fourth sub-district sub of Bangladesh uh, through a grant from Resolve to Save Life. And we are working with non-communicable disease control program of the Ministry of Health. So just to give a back background about uh, the Bangladesh uh, non-communicable disease burden situation in Bangladesh, uh, uh, as like many other uh, low and middle income countries, Bangladesh has uh, both uh, communicable and non-communicable disease burden, but uh, the non-communicable disease burden has uh, becoming larger now. And it is uh, the 67% of death of, are from non-communicable disease. And among those deaths, 22% 22, 22 are actually from premature death. And cardiovascular disease actually has the highest proportion of mortality rate in Bangladesh. This is about 30%. And if we see the uh, global burden of data, uh, studies that high blood pressure is uh, one of the top three causes uh, of contribution of uh, for contributor um, contribution to the uh, daily in Bangladesh. As for prevalence of hypertension, recent data from non-communicable disease uh, step survey in 2018 have shown that uh, about 21% of the population aged 18 years and above have high blood pressure or hypertension. And there is slightly raised 
um, increase uh, prevalence in urban population compared to the rural population. But if we look at the awareness rate, uh, almost half of the population actually, were not, uh, half of the hypertensive hypertensives were not actually aware of their hypertension status. And among those who are aware, almost half were uh, have their blood pressure uh, treated, uh, aware but not controlled. And uh, only 15 to 30% actually have their blood pressure controlled. And the com control rate in rural population a bit lower than the urban population. So the objective were of our project with uh, Resolve to Save Life and with Non-Communicable Disease Control Program is to strengthen the primary healthcare system for delivering hypertension screening, detection and treatment and follow-up services. And to increase the hypertension control rate among patients taking hypertension treatment from primary healthcare system and to increase the hypertension detection and control rate among community. So in Bangladesh, the primary healthcare system at public level, at public facilities, it starts from uh, Upajala hospital or a sub-district hospital. This uh, sub-districts actually covers, uh, uh, this sub-district hospital actually covers about um, on an average 200,000 population. And uh, below this sub-district hospital, there are community clinics, which serves around 10 to 10, uh, 10 around 10,000 population. It's uh, very close to the population community level. And also we have union sub-centers. So the duration we started work, uh, the pilot phase we started in four sub-districts from October 2018 and which ended in 2020. And now we have uh, we are going to the uh, scale up uh, phase. That is, uh, we are scaling up to 54 sub-districts um, in four, four districts of Bangladesh. As you can see, we started from the SILET. Um, we started from SILET and then now we expanded to four sub districts of different uh, three divisions. So, uh, in our pilot phase, we actually covered about 1,950,000 population, but uh, uh, in our uh, uh, the expanded phase, we are going to cover about uh, one crore of population in, in, in sub living in those sub districts. So what we did, we actually worked with government and strengthened the service delivery. In, uh, in our pilot phase, we actually established NCD corners in Upajala Health uh, Complexes or Upajala Health Hospitals. And then in each hospital, we have established a universal screening, um, uh, universal blood pressure screening. And also the physicians, nurses, and community health, health workers from the community clinics we are trained in blood pressure measurement as well as delivery of lifestyle intervention. And then uh, working with government, we have adopted a standard treatment protocol and physicians were trained to follow that protocol. Government actually, actually ensured the medication supply and this, this medication supply um, uh, medicines were in the essential service package list of the government. So government purchased all those medication and supplied it, necessary medications were supplied to the Upajala level. So initially when we started in our uh, Upajala, uh, uh, in pilot phase, we actually kept our record in paper and pencil method, a paper based. But since February, 2020, we in introduced simple app and all data were in, um, all patient data and the related follow-up data were in simple database. So, so far up until December 2020, uh, we have uh, uh, actually screened about more than 100,000 100, patients screened in the Upajala Health Hospitals and more than 18,000 or nine, around 19,000 hypertensive were registered in four Upajalas. So if you see this uh, graph from a simple dashboard, you can see that uh, till March 2021, uh, approximately 21,000 registrations were done. And uh, the registration actually increased gradually since we started in April 2019. Uh, we have actually uh, kept data in the beginning in uh, paper pencil method, but we also kept data in Excel, Excel format. So when Simple was introduced in February, 
we in February 2020, we actually retrieve all these Excel data and put it in the simple database. So we can actually see the trend from the very beginning of, of from our project. So periodically we reviewed the simple dashboard and we have identified, uh, and also after discussion with Resolve to Save Life team, we have identified that there are high, high rate of missed visit and low, sorry, missed visit and so lower control rate were also identified. And then we have done this uh, QI uh, intervention workshop Run by conducted by Dr. Rina Gupta in July 20, July 2020. So we had a two um, 1.5 hour online session, and our staff actually acquainted with this QI intervention method and PDS cycle, and learn about doing fishbone analysis, pickup chart, etc. So as Dr. Rina already have shown this uh, fish uh, fishbone chart and also the uh, pickup chart from Bangladesh. I'm just picking up uh, the points that we identified from those uh, fishbone analyses. We identified that uh, there is a high loss to follow up, an important, uh, 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 important issue for this lower control rate. And then also uh, when we are consulting with other staffs, they come up with ideas that's probably distance to uh, the, our Upojata health complex, long wait time and reduced wait office hours, and there is no, there, at that time, there was no follow up calls and, and no refills at community clinics, probably causing this loss to follow up. And also, we identified there is uh, uh, our doctors, many, at that, in the beginning, they are not uh, adhering to the protocol. Or there was a treatment inertia, probably a cause of loss to follow up. And also, for patient part, non adherence to medication could be one of the cause of loss to follow up. So these are the points that we identified that we need to intervene. So after that initial uh, workshops, we actually continue to do this biweekly uh, QI meetings with our core team and with Dr. Rina and also Resolve to Save, Tem Save um, Life um, uh, team. So uh, in that meeting, actually we review the data dashboard and then we actually assigned uh, owners for each of the countermeasures, and then the, the owners actually provide the what they have done to actually um, as a countermeasure and what was the work plan. So we actually followed this PDSA cycle uh, uh, during each of the QI meetings to actually overview our activities, and also then we plan for next next week. So the PDSS cycle intervention, uh, we actually identified three things, loss to follow up, treatment inertia. So we identified loss to follow up, treatment inertia, and non adherence to the medication. These three things we picked up. And then for loss to follow up, we identified that we have to start overdue call list as those are not coming, they should be called. And so for that, we actually, uh, our staff, gathered these, oh, the list from uh, uh, Resolve to Save Life or for Simple Database. And they actually call them to clear the overdue backlog. And also we, and we actually requested the staff nurse to call, but sometime the huge backlog, they were not able to call all the patients. So our staff helped them to call the overdue. And then through this, during this overdue call, we also asked the question about why they are not coming and actually 50% stated that they did not visit due to the distance and, uh, of, of uh, Upajala Health System, Upajala Health Hospital from their villages. So then what we have done, we actually start, uh, we are continuing to call the overdue call and we actually ask nurse to do counseling during when, when, when patient newly got registered and the nurses emphasize on coming back to hospital to get their medicine and to keep their blood pressure under control by taking regular medication. These things uh, were um, advocated to the nurse or uh, advised to nurses to do it diligently. And also we, are, we also started to doing advocacy with policymakers to allow refilling of drugs from community clinic. 
And uh, this needs a uh, policy change at a high level. So uh, because uh, community clinics are under different, um, I would say administration in Ministry of Health. So we have uh, done several high level policy level, level meeting and uh, many of, I mean, almost all of the sectors have actually agreed of supplying ref refill of drug from community clinic, but if yet to be started, but we hope it will start as soon. Then another point we identified treatment in Asia, and for that actually we plan to advocate with doctors, and we, we and we actually uh, talk with doctors and uh, reinforce that uh, we need to follow the treatment plan that we have, and uh, then we actually then following up uh, after uh, refreshers training of the doctors and nurses, we actually following up with the uh, simple. Uh, uh, patient line list from simple uh, data set or the dashboard and refresher trainings are planned for all, all, all kinds of stuff in, in our, for reduced treatment in Asia. For non adherence to medication, we also uh, advocated with doctors uh, to tell the uh, patient to continue with drugs and doctors and nurses. And also we try to make um, medication available in our Upajala health complexes. So whenever there are the chances of stock out. Our staff actually uh, talk with uh, the manager of the healthcare uh, authority, um, Upajala Health Complex Authority, and try to avoid this stock out. So we, we learned from our experience that if there is a stock out, that is a very big impact on patient coming back and non adherence to the medication. So these are actually the inter quality improvement intervention that we took in our pilot, pilot districts. But in our scale up projects, we are yet to start work on it. We have just completed the recruitment and the training will be done in, after this COVID situation become a bit normalized. And then afterwards, we will be doing some quality intervention in our scale up projects also, scale up areas also. So this is one of our, one of our uh, calling, uh, overdue patient calling feedback. So from this, from 7 January to February, our staff actually call almost 3,500 phone calls have been done. And most of them actually agreed to come back, but some of them actually, uh, and many of them were not, could not be reached due to wrong phone numbers. And some of them actually cited that due to, they, they moved to the other provided like uh, private um, medical facilities. So this is uh, the latest um, BP control rate. As you can see, we have started this QI intervention in August, 2020. And it was at that time, it was 44% control rate. Then there is, the latest one is 51%. So we have actually, after this QI intervention, the control rate actually increased. And when we started, it was very low, it was 16, but gradually it increased and lately, after the QI intervention, the rate of increase is quite high, but we are, then we have a sudden fall, the probably due to COVID related issues. And the missed visit also, we, we had a very high, in the, in the beginning, the very high missed visit we have noted. And then we started this, um, in August, we have this QI intervention and call, call, phone call were started. And then gradually we can see that from 44% missing miss visit, it reduced it reduced to 28%. So you can see that impact of quality improvement intervention we have, we have, have been taking here. Yeah, I think that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Soha. Uh, we can now uh, jump into the Q&A portion. I see there are quite a few questions already in the chat, so I will just get started and we can direct them to our various presenters. Um, first that I see uh, is from Kavita. Uh, Kavita writes, I wonder if the team has collected cost data, cost incurred to implement QI strategies. It would be useful to know how much cost effective, how cost effective these strategies are compared to usual care. Also, are you collecting process measures and indicators such as inner and outer settings that might influence sustainability of the QI strategies for hypertension? Uh, Rina, I see you have elected to answer that question? 
Thanks, Lindsay. Sure, I can start and then uh, turn it over to our other panelists if they have things to add as well. Um, in terms of the cost uh, effective analysis, cost effectiveness analysis and costing data, um, such an important point to raise. And I think to date, uh, we haven't done a detailed cost effectiveness analysis specifically around these quality improvement of programs, but there are planned um, costing uh, analyses underway in several results to save lives countries. Um, for the overall hypertension program package of which quality improvement and feedback loops is an embedded process. Um, so more that will be forthcoming on that front. Um, and, and absolutely, as you point out, process indicators are a key part of this process that especially for rapid cycle quality improvement, the impact on long-term outcomes such as hypertension control uh, takes time and, and it's critical to really measure for each uh, intervention or quality improvement process, process indicators along the way. Um, and our uh, colleagues, um, you know, can share, but in, in, in the interventions tested following change in process indicators, both for sustainability as well as for standardization of implementation and impact um, is a core part of the process. Thank you. If I may. Sure. Uh, yeah. Actually, we, we have on a separate um, initiative with CDC, we actually have done some cost analysis of this our program and uh, I think Dr. Andrew also knows about it now so we, we actually have done uh, some surveys there and uh, and there are some uh, questionnaires are on cost analysis uh, I mean cost measurement were done with CDC with some uh, stakeholders meeting and also focus group discussions were done and all these uh, results are actually now being analyzed by CDC, and we are hopefully we'll get some uh, final report uh, within a couple of months. Great, thank you. Uh, on to the next question. Um, Isaac writes, wouldn't it be better to implement one intervention at a time and evaluate its impact other than implementing two interventions at one go? Um, and this, I believe Dr. Kieran has elected to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, as I said, in 2019-20, we were implementing all the interventions together, and we also saw the good uh, outcome of retention and control rate. And of course, I mentioned it that uh, we were unable to see which intervention is working well at that uh, particular time. So now in the QI exercise, what we have started from a couple of months, now we are selecting, uh, as I said, in a district, if I, uh, we have selected six health facilities, so we are dividing them uh, into two groups and we are implementing one uh, intervention, one countermeasure in one group so that we can compare between two groups which uh, countermeasure is uh, working well or what is the result. So, so we are um, doing that uh, measuring uh, individually. Uh, we have started now. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, someone has asked for a clarification on uh, decentralization as a countermeasure. So yeah, it's a question to me, I think. So yeah. uh, so to begin with IHCI, we actually uh, started uh, delivering services uh, from PHC, uh, that is primary health centers in India and above uh, till district level. So there we have a medical doctor uh, and uh, the patients coming to primary health, the primary health center covers almost 30,000 population in India. So it covers many villages, maybe from 15 to 20 villages or in some PHC, bigger PHC, it may cover 30 villages. So the villages far away from PHC, patients uh, will be unable to come to PHCs because of various reasons, as uh, maybe financial reasons, social reasons, and uh, people are, most of the people would be working, uh, which we are targeting more than. You know. So, so uh, at that uh, particular time, we need to uh, have uh, decentralized services. That means we have to go below the PHC facilities, that is at village level. So we have involved the frontline workers, the ASHAs, who are uh, who will be staying in the village. So we will be uh, uh, sending the drugs to the villages uh, at uh, uh, 
village level through ANMs and ASHAs. And if patients are, uh, there are sub centers below PLCs in India at village level. So patients are mobilized to uh, the sub centers which are in the same village. If patients are not coming to sub center, the ASHA will take the drugs and deliver the drugs to the dose types. So, uh, so that is a decentralization strategy what we have adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karen. And to add to add to one point uh, that uh, most of our states, like ten states, who are implementing are using simple application now. So it's easy now to to decentralize that uh, if a patient is enrolled in a district level district hospital, mm -hmm. so for various reason patient might can't come to the district hospital. So we are transferring the patient through simple lab to PHC or sub center. So that's one more point uh, as a part of decentralization we are doing. Thank you. Thanks. And we are almost at time. Uh, sorry if we didn't get a chance to get to your question, but. I want to give our speakers um, an opportunity to just share some final words on uh, quality improvement before we, we close for today's session. So we can start with Rena and then um, go through our, the rest of our presenters. Any final words? Thanks, Lindsay. Um, I'll just share that uh, it is exciting to be a part of and, and, and witness these initiatives around quality improvement. And I think especially from our um, esteemed presenters today sharing the experience from India and Bangladesh, um, the rigor and the intentionality of implementing approaches beyond implementation of a package to really look at what is the data showing us where and how can we continue to improve um, and, and creating that process um, to, to look for outcomes has really um, been uh, uh, both exciting and, and I think um, uh, moving move forward a lot of the progress um, of the hypertension programs. Thank you. Thanks. Over to Dr. Sohal or Dr. Shamim for uh, insights from Bangladesh. Okay, I think, yeah, this is a good opportunity for us to learn about this QIA initiative. And I thank Dr. Rina Gupta for taking this initiative and RTC, RTSL to train our staff on this QIA initiative. And we hope we would continue this uh, QIA initiative in our scale up project areas also. And certainly this will help us to attain this uh, target of control level and lowering the mistake. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Dr. Kieran, any final words? Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks to Resolve uh, to say Life's team, uh, because this is a great initiative. Uh, so we are learning a lot. Uh, so the countermeasures and their impact is uh, to know the impact is very necessary uh, to improve the program. Uh, so the process indicators and outcome indicators and their measurement and how they are impacting. It's very vital to know uh, for the improvement of the program. So thanks to the team for uh, giving, uh, for supporting this uh, to go ahead. Thank you so much. And I'd, I'd like to, again, say thank you to our uh, presenters. Thank you, Dr. Rina, Dr. Sohal, and Dr. Kieran. Um, as you all have said, I think this is really important work and it's great to understand how much effort goes into really improving these hypertension programs. And a special thank you to Dr. Moran for facilitating today's webinar. Uh, the webinar has been recorded and will be posted to the LINCS website um, as uh, with the, the presentations from our speakers. Um, thank you everyone for such a lively conversation and we look forward to seeing you at the next LINCS webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.